it's time to take a look at the highest grossing films in cinemas. This is the box office countdown. Grossing $7.9 million, this week's number five is for the R-rated comedy Game Night. Guys, what do you say we do this at my house next week? This will be a game night to remember. Oh boy. Mm. She's Annie. I'm Max. <laughs> we met at a trivia night. Yeah. Um, love at first sight. First, first answer. First answer, yeah. And so that's kind of what's brought us together in life, is our competitive nature and, you know, being able to finish each other's sentences and liking just playing games. That's all we like to do with our life. And if you're, if you're involved in any sort of game nights at all, like a lot of my friends and couples friends are, you relate to a lot of some of the stuff in this and, and the escalation that happens beyond that when it leaves the house and it gets out into the streets and we get into sort of the, the action comedy elements of this, that's kind of where you, you'd want, that's why it deserves to be a movie. Going down from two to four with $8.1 million is the mysterious thriller Red Sparrow, where we see Jennifer Lawrence as a Russian intelligence agent. Take off your dress. Physically, I think really honestly the hardest part was the ballet. Everything else was so, you know, when you watch the movie, things are kind of, there's a lot of dark subject matters. And I've been friends with you know, most of the crew. They were all from like Hunger Games. So I actually really had fun every day on set. I don't see this as a political movie. To me, I see it as a human movie. And I'm, I'm just much more interested in the sort of the gray zone of what people are willing to risk in terms of trading information. I mean, you know, you don't, it doesn't even matter what the information is in our movie, but people are risking their lives for this kind of stuff. And that stuff, that fascinates me. Opening in cinemas last weekend with 10.4 million is the scary flick Strangers Pray at Night. What the hell? We spend the night in a trailer park uh, just close to where we'll be delivering our daughter the next morning. And shortly after settling in to our trailer, things start getting a little odd. And then a bit of horror ensues as we're sort of systematically hunted down by these masked uh, strangers. The thing that I love is that I don't know who the strangers are and I think they have absolutely no reason to do it. That's what's scary. It's something that's so flighty and without purpose that makes it even scarier. That someone would not sit down and plot it and have intentions and stuff, that they would do something this messed up on a whim. Also new in the box office with $33.3 million, good for the second place, is the sci-fi adventure A Wrinkle in Time. Where are we? We heard a cry out in the universe. My father's alive. We believe he is, and we're here to help you find him. We are in search of warriors. Warriors who serve the good and the light in the universe. You're kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? A little. I'm not. I'm not. A Wrinkle in Time is about um, a shift in our perception in the present moment. You know, Wrinkle in Time is not about time travel. They don't go to different times. Uh, they're right here. They just go to a different place. And I love the idea of that. You know, if we shift our perception, shift the way that we're thinking about what's going on, you could literally wrinkle in time. You can literally shift the way you're experiencing the present moment, that things aren't happening to you in a bad way. They're happening for you. And this week's number one, grossing over $41.1 million, is Marvel's action flick Black Panther, bringing its staggering worldwide total to over a billion dollars. Woo! Let's go! I was enthusiastic about, I guess, how Wakanda was being um, presented initially. I think it has a great villain in the story. I felt like, you know, there was a lot of ground that we didn't cover in Civil War, that we had a lot of room in this one, and, and they took a lot of room. And so I was enthusiastic about everything that, that we were about to do. Friends would ask me, they were like, you, you read any comics? I was like, I read a few things, you know, but like, there's this one called the Black Panther, but you didn't know there's this black superhero out there, right? And they're like, no. And so I was working on a TV show at the time, and a buddy of mine said, you know what you should do, dude? You should get the rights to this. And I remember saying to myself, they ain't never gonna do no black superhero movie, man. What you talking about? And here we are. 